We are all welcome to the presence of the Lord this morning. What a great place to be. And you are going to find that one out in a moment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today I'm talking on securing your destiny with God. Amen. Securing your what? And why did I choose that topic? It's because you hear people say, well, it's in the hands of God if it is his will. Have you heard that before? I didn't hear you. Have you yourself said that before? It's not amen, it's yes, I've said it before. Your being an elder that did not excuse you. Amen? Oh, thank you. Hallelujah. You see, because most of the times we ought ourselves. Not even the devil. He said, my people are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. So most of the times we hurt ourselves with ignorance. And as such, we make such statements. The Lord Jesus Christ prayed twice, if it be thy will. Did he, did he get an answer? You get my point. Why? Because God has given us his will. And he told us to go study it. Study to show yourself approval to God, a man that not, needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He told us this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. I mean, is there? Are you following me? He has given us, his word is his will. So he's, he's told us what to do. He has shown us where to go. Amen. Do you get my point now? So we need to find out. That's why the psalmist we play, teach me thy will, O God. Show me thy ways. Amen? That's very important. And not only that, he came here himself for three and a half years, we're told, and opened expressly to us the will of God. So it's very important for us to know how to secure destiny. And like, uh, uh, if I might add, most of the time when we say such, it's because we don't want to do what we should do, so we throw it to him. You get my point? But it doesn't work that way. If the Son of God himself prayed, if it be thy will, and he didn't answer him, do you think he will escape it? Do you get my point now? But the good news is this. God is unfolding his word to us day by day, week by week, year by year, expecting us to favorably respond to what we hear. This year you will celebrate. I don't want us to forget the word for this year, Leviticus 26 verse 9. For I will have respect unto you, and will multiply you exceedingly, and multiply you and establish my covenant. And that's the word that catch my attention. We are a covenant people. Amen? We are a covenant people. And covenant also means you have a part, an active part to play. Amen? You have what? No. No not just a part, an active one. Amen. For example, look at this. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? Some of you are not sure. Are you sure? Okay. For I know the thoughts that I think so as you see the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to what? To give you an expected end. Another translation says to give you a hope and a future. 
But then he told us what to do, how to come about that. You pray. Let's watch. We are a covenant people on a journey with God. And in, on this journey, it is the discovery of the truth that sets the pace for our advancement or recovery, whichever one. And in scriptures, the Bible says all these men of old were examples for us. The Bible talks of through the comfort of scripture, we have hope. That's if we read it. Amen? I said amen. amen. But then here we are in Hebrews 11 from verse 13. I like going back to that again. Where he said, these all, talking of the heroes of faith that we read, died in faith. They kept the faith. But then, not having received the promises, not that their faith did not work, but it was not for their dispensation because they were looking to a future that was not for their dispensation. He said, but having seen them afar off, they were persuaded. You see, that's what they did. And they embraced them. And they confessed them that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Amen. How did they do it? For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. They were in the midst of a people, but their language was different. <laughs> they say such things. They say things that were not common. They would not allow their friends or you know, their tongue. Because if I say, if I speak like this, these people will laugh at me. Do you understand that? If I speak like this, these people will um, go check the office. If I speak like this, these people will, um, will think I'm, I'm, I'm religious. They will say I'm talking funny. They didn't let all that intimidate them. They kept speaking what they believed. They kept confessing what they hold on to. Look at it again. For they that say such things, and they declared plainly. They will not be intimidated, my friends, family, whatever. They declare plainly that they seek a country. Amen? And truly, if they have been mindful of the country from when they have come out, they might have had opportunity to return. They broke the bridge. But now, can I hear you say, but now? They desire a better country. Do you desire better? Elder was very fast to say yes. You desire better. You see, what I'm trying to show you is God has great promises for them, but you can see the part they, are pl they played. Amen? But now they desire a better country that is unheavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed for this reason. God was not ashamed to be called their God because of what they did, because of how they conducted themselves. Are you following me? And indeed, he prepared for them a city. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. What do you desire? Is it what you declare plainly? Amen? They knew they were a covenant people, so they kept at it. Can you imagine a man, God said, sacrifice your son to me, and he took knife and carried the boy early in the morning. Why? Because he knew God. Listen to me carefully. Abraham did not just go to sacrifice Isaac for nothing. It was born out of his knowledge of God. It was born out of his understanding of God. You know, the Bible says, now, Abraham said, God has told me, in Isaac shall my seed be. And I will raise a generation through Isaac, right? And God said, go kill Isaac. He said, it's your problem. I know you. I know this word that you have said, you will fulfill it. That means, and the only way to fulfill it is I kill him, you raise him up from the dead. And I know you can do that. The Bible says that. And he believed in me enough for that. Has he seen God raise somebody from the dead before? No. But his faith was strong enough to know that he would do that. 
and he knew him and he understood him. You see, when you say, when a man of faith is taking a step and you are pitying him, you are only pitying yourself because he does not even know what you are saying. His faith is online. He has seen beyond that act. Amen? He has seen beyond that act. That's why the Bible says, they that say such things. Today, I'm going to be looking at Jacob, one of our covenant fathers. Amen? Do you know Jacob? One of our covenant fathers. Let's look at it. Before he was born, destiny spoke of him. The elder shall serve the younger. Two nations are in there. One. One will be stronger than the other. Right? We know that. And then he came. But he did not come in the position by covenant to be the stronger one. Do you understand what I mean? He came number two. You know, um, Jacob said, was he writing in Genesis 49, talking about the firstborn? Reuben, that was my firstborn. The beginning of strength, the excellency of dignity, because that is attached to the firstborn. Destiny spoke of him. He was already ordained by destiny to be the stronger one. But then a lot of things happened. And then in Genesis 28, verse 3, Isaac, the father, eventually transferred the blessing of the covenant to him. Watch. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply you that thou beest be a multitude of people. Now look at verse 4. And give the blessing of Abraham. That's the covenant of Abraham, the strength of it. You understand me? And give the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. He got it at last. Amen? He got it at last. And here, Jacob, had destiny spoken over his life. But he was still desolate at that point. He was still a destitute at that point. Are you getting my point? To the point that when he left his father, he could use a stone for pillow. He had only a staff with him. But he had the word of promise. Amen? You know, he said before, with this staff, I crossed this Jordan. You remember? So it's not as if when the word of promise was given to him, everything just manifested. No. Faith is a fight. He had the word of promise. Amen? Is that your note? Nobody is going to read that one. He had the word of promise. I need you to listen to me today. Oh, but if he's a man of God, all these things should not happen. Oh, okay, if he's a child of God, all these things is not happen. It's not so. You will fight for it. There will be contention for it. But how do we fight for it? And there he was going. Then one night, he had an encounter with God. He had a dream. From verse 12. And he dreamed a dream. Behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached unto heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. Verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad, 
abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy sea shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and we keep thee in all the places whither thou goest, and we bring thee again unto this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Now, if you had God come to you and say that to you, what would you do? Just go home and rest. He has said it. I've had direct from him, right? No, it doesn't work that way. That was God confirming the covenant to him. That was God telling him, I would not leave you. I will fulfill it. Good. Clap. Then go home and sleep and be waiting for when it will be fulfilled. But still, that's why the Bible says, all these men are examples for us. We learn from them. But you see, these were men and women who operated with God from a position of understanding. Are you following me? From a position of what? I didn't hear you. And what did I mean by it? Just like Abraham, they knew God. They knew how to walk with God. They knew the ways of God. Like I told you last week, no word of prophecy fulfills itself. It has to be made to answer. You have to fight for it. We read what Paul told Timothy that that, that might as well be good warfare by the prophecies that have gone ahead of you. And that's the error on our part. We said God has spoken and we do it. What is more that God has spoken than what he just told Jacob now? Do you understand me? He had an encounter. He has received the word. But he knew. His understanding of God, his knowledge of God knew that there is what to do to make those words what come to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I say glory to God. What did Jacob I won't receive the word just like you and I have a word for this year. Think of these two things. It put the things that will move God to perform in place. That's all we do. All we do is putting in place things that will move God to perform. Amen? And when Jacob came out of that dream, verse 22, Of course, he said all he would say, this is a dreadful place. This is not other than, I will come back to that later. He said, one, this stone, which I have set for a pillar, you know, he anointed it and all that, shall be God's house. The first thing he did to commit God was about his house. Was about what? And of all that thou shalt give me, surely, I will surely give a tenth to you what we call tithe today. First, let's start. What he would do for God's house was what he put on the table. And I'm going to show you something here today. It's always first about his house. That's what a lot of the do know. His house is a place of opportunity for you. Where? His house. Glory to God. Remember what David said, First Chronicles 22 verse 5. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender. And the house that is to be built for the Lord. What do we call the house that we built for the Lord today? 
What do we call it today? You are not sure. If you are sure, say it. What do we call it today? Church. Amen. He said, the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding magnifico. Wow. Of fame and of glory throughout all countries. And we therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly for it. You see, what we don't know is this. The church today or like in the Old Testament, God said, and thou shalt go unto the place of which I choose to put my name there. When that building is up, he puts what? His name. It becomes his. It is to reflect him. Are you following me? It's to speak of his glory. So those who have that understanding, walk with it. In fact, in First Chronicles 29, Verse 1, David said, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Talking about the church. It's not for man. It's not Elder Uchenna's name that is there. Though he spends more time than everybody in this place. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whose name is on it? I'm asking you. Uh, only two people know it. Whose name is on it? God's name is on it. So anything that touches his house, touches him. Amen? The church is not man's house, but the Lord's. So every beauty imagined should be given to it. You use the church to commit him, his church, are you following me? To commit him to what? To perform. You use the building of his church to commit him to perform. You use what you do to his church, in his church, to commit him to perform. You get a secret now. It's a secret from him. Somebody has called me that she wanted to put flowers. This, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, this time, I said, my baby will fight you. It's my baby will put it there, so don't just move near it. Look for something else for yourself. And I can see her face now when I was talking. Her face is already, say, what? So <laughs> I said, it doesn't work that way. Everybody looks to decorate his house by faith for God to move for them. Everybody looks for what to do for his house. To improve his house. I'm just giving you in, in, in practical sense as it is. For God to move on his house. Everybody makes pledges of what we do for his house. For God to commit himself to perform for him. A lot of people don't know that secret. He said, for the Lord my God will surely build you a good, uh, will build you a sure house. Because you fight the battles of the Lord. When you keep doing things for the Lord, he fights your fight. It's a secret. It's an open secret. But many people just come, go, do nothing, come, go, drop offering. Okay. No, there are things you make yourself do to provoke him to perform when it comes to his house. The building of his house. Hallelujah. Let's follow up with Jacob. Why will Jacob do that? Putting the building of God's house first. You will not understand that until you hear what Jacob himself said about God's house. Genesis 28, we are still there from verse 16. And Jacob had woke out of sleep. And say, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. I took it like any other place. Just like people can walk in here and take it like any other place. 
and they go with nothing. But somebody can walk in here with understanding, even without service going on, and know that this is God's house and connect with God. You get my point? It's all coming down to understanding. He was afraid and he said, how dreadful, not dreadful in terms of negativity, but how fearful is this place? This is not order but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. What has he said? The Lord is there in his house. That's number one. It's a fearful place. Number two, God dwells there. Number three, is the gate of heaven. That means you can only access heaven through it. You go through a gate to access the place. So Jacob, in putting the building of God's house, first, it was because he understood what it stands to mean with God himself. This is a fearful place. Amen. This is the gate of heaven. I gave most of you keys, but very few of you come to encounter God personally here outside of service time because you don't really understand it. Come in tonight, open, don't look at me. I know you are you have ups, you are you have overtaken the old place. I think I have to collect my key back from you. you don't you think so? You come in the night by yourself. Let me talk to the God that dwell in this house. Because you understand that. You come with your tears, if I, perhaps. Come with your pains, perhaps. That's a secret. You know, the Bible says the secret things belong to God. But the things that are revealed belongs to all. God is a God of secrets. So you take those secrets, like Job said, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. In fact, I need to read that. And we need to understand certain things. The secrets of God are what we trade with understanding, insecurity, and testing. What makes someone come to church and see it as an ordinary place? Because he or she does not understand the secret of God loaded in it. You hear, even when the Lord Jesus was here, as religious, do you understand me? As their sanctuary where they, they have, you know, they have turned them to business center, he still would not miss the place. Do you get the picture now? You know what they have turned their sanctuaries to in those days? Their business centers, uh, full of and changing dollar. That's what they are turning it to. Selling doors, doing all that. But Jesus will still not miss it, as his custom was. <laughs> because it's not about them, it's about him. And one day he said, Enough is enough. They carry Koboko, you know what we're going. <laughs> Some of these other ones won't understand how he chased all of them out. Because anywhere they put his name is his property. His name is there. Amen. His name is put here as his house. So he's the one that dwells here. For those who understand that and who see it by faith. Let's read Job. From Job chapter 29, from verse 4. Job said, As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret, watch the language, of God was upon me. That's the Thais tabernacle. Job said, I had access to certain secrets from heaven. When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I wash my steps with butter and the rock poured me out rivers of oil, he was talking of his wealth and fortune. When I went out of, through the gate, to the gate, through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves. The ages arose and stood up, tremendous honor. The nobles held their mouth, sorry, the princes 
refrain talking and laid their hands to their mouth and the nobles had their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth when the hear heard me then it blessed me <laughs> do you understand what he was talking about before his affliction his position our men the kings the nobles regarded him and honored him the he, when the hear heard me then it blessed me when the high saw me, then he gave witness to me. Why all these honor and blessings to Job? Why do the princes and the nobles, when Job spoke, they kept quiet? Why? Verse 12. What's the first word in verse 12? If you are going to say it, can you please say it out loud? I want everybody to say it. You see? Nobody heard you. Hello? Nobody heard you. Everybody, can you say it again? Oh, She's still talking from underneath. The, maybe the husband didn't feed her this morning. We have to, and we will not be surprised about that. Amen? What does because mean? Is want to tell us the reason why he enjoyed. Are you following me? All that honor. Because I delivered the poor that cried. But remember where he started from? He started from the secret of God. He took that secret, taking care of the needy, taking care of the helpless. Are you following me? He took that secret. He said, because I delivered the poor that cry and the fatherless and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy, taking care of widows. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. And judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was highs to the blind, feet to the lame. I was a father to the poor. And the cause which I knew not, I searched out. I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the, spo the spoil out of his teeth. So he told us earlier, he had the secrets of God. When he shined his light by the word of God, he understood. And he put those secrets to work. And then began to enjoy unusual honor. Do you understand me? He said it. God has secrets. So Job traded those secrets that he knew. The first is his house. I'm going to tell you this. And all of you online, always be committed to the building of his house first. It's a secret, divine secret from above. Your strength, your resources, your gifts, your intellect, you understand me? To the, to the building of his house. Feel his house, decorate his house, fund it first. And see what will be taking place in your life. Not just come and pray there. But pray there. Because he said what? My house shall be called what? A house of prayer. That's why I gave all of you a key. Come pray. Come dance before the Lord. By yourself. Not just because there is service. There is always service. You can do your service alone with God. Can't you? <laughs> Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I came in, maybe it was Thursday when I came to the office. I saw a lot of water there. I knew who put it there. I called him. I said, I know you came to church. She said, yes, I came to pray. And I said, I saw what you brought too. Amen. It's just simple. All of you come and drink the thing free of charge. I think I need to start charging you for the water now. Amen. Glory to God. The second thing that Abraham did, he did with knowledge. He gave him the vow of tithe. What did I call it? Tithe. Every time we mention this, there's always a rumbling. And I don't understand it. 
Because if you truly, truly love the Lord, anything you do for the Lord will be your delight. That's why in the New Testament, God says, anything you bring, bring up. But if it's not out of a heart of gratitude and joy and cheerfulness, the pastors will collect it, but I won't see it. I won't register it. It's a thing of joy. But I want to show you something that I saw yesterday. That's Genesis 28, verse 22. And this told and all the rest, I will give you a tithe. His tithe there was his bound bond to the covenant. I will build your house. I will take care of your house. And of all that thou give me, I will surely give a tent to thee. I think we have taught enough in this church for people to know that some of you say tight is in the law. There was no law here, right? And this is not the first time Abraham has been. There was no law. There was no law. It was just covenant. And we are the children of who? And Jesus Christ said, if you are the children of Abraham, then do the works of Abraham. This was not Moses' era. Moses has not even come. Moses came after Abraham 400 plus years. And we read from Hebrews this morning. But I want you to see something. Abraham, our covenant father himself, had the promise like Jacob had. Are you following me? And it was there. But then something happened. Let's read it from Hebrews. Chapter 7, verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. Full stop. Now, this Melchizedek, we have read it before, was a type of Christ that came. Because he said, no father, no mother. Have you read it? Do you get my point? Everybody knows. And that's why we read Hebrews. Even Christ, he said, Christ, I will make you a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Good. This has nothing to do with Moses or the law. What did Abraham do that make Melchizedek bless him? What did he do? Verse 4. Now consider how great this man was, or to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tent of his boys. Verse 6. But he whose descent is not counted for them, received tithes of Abraham and blessed him. Received tithes. I saw this yesterday. I've read it many times. Received tithes. And that's why you see that comma there. And as a result, that's what it means. Blessed them. Not before. Blessed him that had the promises. What have we said the blessing is? divine empowerment. I will, re, I will re paraphrase that scripture. He received his tithes and empowered the promises to perform. He received his tithes, not one of his tithes, and empowered, because that's what blessing is, supernatural empowerment, and empowered the promises. He's the one who gave the promises. Are you following me? He's the one who said, I will bless you. I will multiply you. I will have respect unto you. He's the one who gave it. But bless, the promises are not empowered to perform yet. Amen? He empowered it when he received it. I, I wrote it down like this in my notes. With his tithes on the table, he blessed him to fulfill the promises. His tithes secured his walk of destiny with God. It registered him to perform. He, like Jacob, provoked the blessing from the Lord, which empowered their destinies. It is on you to provoke his blessings. And the first of it is your tithe. Not the one you have caught the recorder how to and use calculator to kill. The one that is coming from your heart. Are you following me? With what? Understanding. Not because this is what we do in church. No. With understanding. He collected it and blessed them. There is a blessing that flows your way every time you do it with joy and you do it right. We know what all that is. 
So I'm not going into the teaching on that. I'm just telling you what it is. What it stands for. Amen. So please don't, don't do religion. Don't keep tampering with your destiny. Don't keep hurting yourself. That's where I started with. Most of the time we do things that hurt us. I, I, I somehow like those days when we have the booklet. So every time you record it, it's always separate from offering. When we give it. Were you, were you around those days when we were using tight booklet? Did you like it? Or you say where you are coming from, there was nothing like that. It's always very powerful. And you have records. Amen. God is a God of records. Those days we have it, two, two leaves, right? You write your, there is no transfer of anything, no Zoom, nothing. Everything, <laughs> everything is direct paper. So you, you write, you keep a record of what we share it, you put it with your memory, your tight, you put it in an envelope, drop it. So in the church, what we do, we always take that, count the money is correct, and we write. So when we want to do ordination and all of those things, you go to check, check, check. If your name is not checked among those paid tight, nobody is ordaining you. And I was told of some American churches here, you want to do marriage or anything, you want to use church facility, they go, right? Where you are coming from, I land, they do it. They will check the records. This one don't pay tight. Then you now pay to use the facility. And I think I can't rebalance that day. Because if you want to use it, you don't know that some people put it out the money to keep it going. This is a facility we have now. Is it no money keeping it going? You come, you sit, you cross your leg, and you drink water free of charge. Eh? <laughs> but that's the truth, as blank as it is. You understand me? And that's why God put it in place. Because he's not going to drop money from heaven to keep his house going. He has entrusted us with that. And so everyone that gets committed to that, he blesses them. That is his way. Amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. It's not an option. It existed before the law. Like some people want to use the law to, to abrogate it. It's the way of the kingdom. We have done all manner of teachings on all those ones. But I need to let you know, as I saw it, I'm, of course, it has been in my spirit of preach. And I saw yesterday, he paid it, he gave it all and blessed him. He that had the promises. When he sees it, he empowers his promises in your life. He empowers. The offering is a different ball game completely. Everything is there. Please stop hurting your life. Secure the promises of God in your life and give him all that is his. And all the tithe of the land is holy. It is the Lord's. You don't, don't play with it. Hallelujah. I'm glad God has spoken to us again this morning. Now we are in afternoon. There's morning. There are still morning somewhere and there are nights somewhere. So anything I call it is correct. Don't you think so? Some people are almost, if you go to Australia now, I think they are in the 21st day of the month. And we're all on the same heart. So, but that's the word of the Lord. May it have its place in your heart this morning. May you give it to your God, be a delight to you. It's the, it's the key. Because he's the one sustaining your life. <laughs> but people don't know how to use what they have to provoke him. You have to provoke him. That's how it goes. You have to keep provoking him. Amen. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Ask Lord for grace this morning. Two things we said Jacob did in securing destiny. His house. The building of his house. The security of his house. The decoration of his house. The prosperity of his house. Lord, give me grace to be able to focus my strength, energy, and resources on the building of your house. And give me grace with my tight that I would continually do it right. And in so doing, Lord, release the blessing that performs your word of promise in my life. Just pray that for yourself as we close here this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. Glory to your name. In the name of Jesus. Lord, your word has gone forth again. Let it prosper in the heart of all that hear it. 
releasing strong grace and virtue in the name of Jesus. And Father, I'm saying it again for all the sacrifices, the seeds, the tithe, the offerings of your people to this house. Lord of heaven, remember. He said you will remember their offerings and bond sacrifices and grant them their heart's desire. Lord, today again, remember. Lord, today again, remember. These are the ones they, every day putting in their resources for the, into this house in your name. Their tithes, their offerings, their special gifts. Lord, remember and let their seed be prosperous, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember, my Father, and bring tremendous blessings of enlargement to these ones in the name of Jesus. Everyone that keeps, even when there was no service, special offering, they said, special gifts, they said, Lord of heaven, remember, remember my father in the name of Jesus and prosper the path that they take and fulfill your word of promise in their lives, I pray. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your hands.